Hello, I'm John Perry, and I'm joined by Representative Jim Tedder. Representative, good to see you. Good to see you, John. Thanks for having me in. Uh, this marks the 10th anniversary of a temporary tax increase uh, revolving around the government shutdown of 2007. And I am sure, as the chair of the House Tax Policy Committee, as we come up on that 10th anniversary, that's got to be something you're thinking about. Uh, that, that's been weighing on my mind a very long time and, and certainly even uh, deferring back to you know the early uh, the early portion of of session where we tried to shepherd House Bill 4001 through to achieve some level of meaningful income tax reform and at the very least return um, to 3.9 percent as promised yes a decade ago October 1st marks the 10th anniversary of the quote unquote temporary tax cut. And just to underscore that point, that is something that was supposed to be rolled back, and it's never gotten back to where it was when it was bumped up 10 years ago now. That's correct. There was, uh, there was an eventual phase, uh, phase down to 3.9, which would have uh, culminated in 2015, but again, due to... Uh, I guess budgetary challenges uh, faced by my predecessors. There was a need at the time, at least the, the general consensus, was to freeze the income tax reduction at 4.25. And so I wasn't there for those discussions. I don't begrudge the challenges that my predecessors um, were faced with, but certainly I believe that we can universally acknowledge that our state's in a different position than it was in 2012 and certainly in a different position than it was in 2007. And so as our budget surplus continues to grow, um, as we continue to expand the permanent structural increases in various parts of our budget, I think it's, uh, it's important that we continue the conversation about how we can deliver some level of meaningful income tax reform for working people and for our small business community. Because it can be argued, can't it, that this was a promise that was made to Michigan families. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, some will argue, well, promises are broken all the time in this business and we are not beholden to the promises of the past. But I push back a little bit on that in that I don't think as someone that stands for limited government, as someone that is representative of the working class families of this state, having been raised in a household as such, that um, we would be remiss in our responsibilities as legislators not to have an open and broad discussion about how we deliver broad-based relief for the taxpayers of Michigan. On another topic, Representative, you've been working back in Oakland County on skilled trades issues. Um, construction trades, construction careers. Mm -hmm. Could you make the argument that maybe we are starting to see a shift where these skilled careers maybe are given uh, a little more currency and credibility than they were a few years ago? Absolutely. And, and not only are we seeing a, uh, an acknowledgement of, of the value and really the financial opportunities that skilled trade careers present, but I'm, I'm slowly noticing uh, uh, an elimination of the stigma that was often associated with those career pathways. And um, use the example within my own household. My oldest son chose to uh, spend half of his junior and senior years at the Career and Technical Education Center in uh, what was called the engineering cluster within Oakland schools. And there were a multitude of career pathways one could approach. Um, he walked out with several different certifications which were would have been applicable right out of high school. He, however, opted to go on to Grand Valley and pursue an engineering career. Likewise, my, my second oldest, my youngest son, he is pursuing the entrepreneurship and business cluster at Oakland schools. And so is following in his brother's footsteps to some degree and acknowledging that this uh, really a hands-on um, experiential learning is very valuable whether you are going to pursue uh, a career right out of school or perhaps going on to college 
um, universally, these experiences are very valuable. And so I've been really excited to, uh, to partner with Oakland Schools. Um, Dr. Uh, Wanda Cook Robinson, um, since she has taken the helm as, as superintendent, has really uh, been a big champion of, of bringing back our offsite construction trades program, which I was very pleased to be an integral part of. Clarkston uh, Community Schools, likewise, is offering a Clarkston technology, um, construction technology program that is available for ninth and 10th graders. And I was fortunate to be able to actually visit that classroom on the first full day of school. And I got to tell you, those students, you wouldn't have known whether they'd been in that class for two months or two minutes. They were all engaged, excited about learning. I had an opportunity to talk to many of them. And some were on a college track. Some were opting to go right into construction, the construction trades right out of high school. So there's a lot of buzz and a lot of excitement in and around uh, career and technical education. I'm excited to be a part of it. Representative Jim Tedder, thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm John Perry. Thank you for joining us.